Today's scripture reading comes from Lamentations 3, 19 through 26. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I remember them well, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, welcome to summer. (laughs) It is hot this weekend. So we've been glad here at Summit Avenue to provide a cool place for people to get out of the weather, out of the heat. Uh, Air conditioning is a good thing, isn't it? So how many of you have at least a little bit of AC at home? Oh, that's good. Yep. Some of you are like, no. Uh, How about a cool basement or a shady deck by some water at least, maybe? Yep. Good, good. Even those hands went a little tired going up. How many of you made it to a lake or into the sound or at least filled a bucket or a kiddie pool with some water to soak your feet this weekend? Yeah, Tinica's, yep, lake, some, some kind of water. Yeah, water just is what we need, isn't it? The bathtub. The bathtub works. <laughs> That's right. So today's New Testament lesson from the lectionary takes us to the shores of a lake, the Sea of Galilee. So we don't know if it was hot outside. I always imagine it's sunny and warm in these stories. Um, so I imagine by, we're by a lake. Doesn't that just sound lovely right now? We're by a lake. And we don't know much of what's going on, whether it was hot or cold or whatever, but we, what we know is that Jesus has been out on a boat for a while. He has calmed a storm in the night, so it has been at least windy lately. And he has healed some people and done some teaching. So we pick up, we're in Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with Jesus, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. I'm going to pause there. So we have two stories, different stories, intersecting here. There is a man with some sway with the Jewish crowd. He's a synagogue leader named Jairus. He has pushed his way through the crowd, fallen at Jesus' feet, and begged him to heal his daughter. 
On their way to Jairus' house, a woman who had been bleeding. This is menstrual female bleeding, something that would have deemed her unclean in the eyes of Jewish society because women on their periods generally stayed isolated and had cleansing rituals to perform when their cycles ended and they went back out with society. So this woman had been stuck in one long, miserable period for 12 years. All the women out there were like, yes, that sounds terrible. Right? So as I think of these two situations, <clears throat> one A man with a right here, right now need. His young daughter has become very sick and is close to death. And the other is a woman who has been suffering physically and socially for over a decade. I hear what Edie read to us from Lamentations, the Old Testament lectionary lesson for today. Remember my affliction and my wandering. The bitterness and the gall, I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. My soul is downcast within me. I wonder how those words wash over you today. I wonder how many of us sitting here in the sanctuary or at home have something that has been, that has come on recently maybe in the last few months, that is just ca- or weeks or days, that is just causing pain, grief, sorrow, whether physical or emotional or spiritual or financial, and your soul is downcast within you. Maybe others who, like the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, you have been dealing with something for a really long time. Health concern. A relationship. Maybe depression or anxiety. You've tried all the things. Spent money on it. And still, it's just there. And your soul is downcast within you. These words from lamentation could be your daily song. Affliction, wandering, loneliness, bitterness, a downcast spirit. Life brings us brief, short-term, right here, right now crises. And then there are those things that just go on for a long time. And we feel like we'll never reach the end. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet, these words from Lamentations also reach us. They reach into the woman's heart that day and come to us. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. And back to the story in Mark, picking up in verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed And immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And this this is the moment in the story that always stops me. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. And he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? And the disciples are so impatient with him on this, which makes me think that maybe it was really hot that day. (laughs) Because they're super irritated. Are we irritated this weekend a little bit more quickly? Yes. You see the, the, the disciples say, you see the people crowding against you, and yet you can ask who touched me? Because, of course, everybody's touching him. But Jesus kept looking to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, 
told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. And then these words from Lamentations speak again. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. The one, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. But not everyone can do that. While Jesus was still speaking, some of the people came to the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. Let's stop and pause and consider this situation. Imagine yourself there that day. Commotion and wailing. A child is sick, possibly dead. All the doctors have come and gone. There seems to be no hope. Some dusty prophet with dirty feet who smells like a fishing boat walks up. Let's be honest. How would you respond? Are you the kind of person who at least thinks and sometimes even says out loud sarcastic comments, doubtful things like, why bother? And maybe even laugh a little at people who are hopeful and eager in a hopeless situation? Yeah, I can totally be that person sometimes. Mm -hmm. But these words from Lamentation shine over this part of the story as well. For that girl's father and mother and friends that day. Yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. So Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Something completely odd and illogical, don't tell anybody, and then something very helpful and logical. I don't totally understand Jesus' thinking in this, but I appreciate that he said, get her something to eat. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. And it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. As we close today... We're going to read together from Lamentations one last time. And as we do so, we'll pause a couple of times, and I invite you to hear and pray these words over whatever situations, whether they're short-term, right now, right here, or long-term, that you are facing holding today. Let's start with this. Let's say this together. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. We'll leave that screen up. We'll go back to that screen. And just hold that and just sit with that for a moment. My soul is downcast within me. Give to God whatever it is that is bringing your soul, your spirit down.
And now let us read together these words. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Now, I want you to imagine reaching out and touching the hem of Jesus' cloak. You might even just open your palm upward. And as you do, I invite you to receive Jesus' presence, God's healing strength. If it feels right to do so, you might close your palm around that promise as we say these words together. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. God's mercies are new every morning, friends. Great is God's faithfulness. To the glory of God Almighty, Redeemer, Creator, Holy Spirit, Sustainer. Amen.